A phenomena is simply something occurs in the real world. So this interview is a phenomena. Uh, what just happened a second ago was a phenomenon. And so in science, we try to look at things that are more interesting than this interview. So we try to find things that are science, and then kids try to explain it. So we put them in the position of the scientist. And so if a phenomenon is something that we observe, then there's got to be things that we do. And so one thing we could do, if we go through the three dimensions, there's practices, cross-cutting concepts, and then disciplinary core ideas. So the disciplinary core ideas is what we learn. The science and engineering practices is what we do. And then the cross-cutting concepts is how we think. So if I were to think about an apple falling from a tree, there's going to be me asking questions like, why does it fall? Um, there's also me trying to understand the science of gravity and why it's falling. But then I should be thinking about cross-cutting concept of cause and effect, what's causing it to fall. And so if we define it as what kids do, what they learn, and how they think, you need all three of those dimensions to understand science, just like we need all three of those dimensions to understand just the real world. The old science classroom, we would just go through content. So you'd come into a science classroom and the teacher would say, we're going to learn about gravity and this is a force of gravity and objects are a distance apart and they pull on each other. And so we would do all the explanation at the beginning and then at the end you do a lab. So what you're really doing is not science. You're just explaining to them and then they eventually get to explore a little bit. And so what does it look like? What does the classroom look like where it's really three dimensional? Is we just do the exploration first before we do the explanation. So in a classroom, kids should be in the role of the scientist. What does the physical classroom look like? Everything I just described, like the cross-cutting concepts and what those are, how we think, the science and engineering practices, those should all be used in the space itself. So they can explicitly say to kids, like right now you're asking a question, what are the elements of a good question? So like when I go into a classroom, how I can judge if it's a three-dimensional classroom is, number one, the teacher shouldn't just be talking. The kids should be exploring. And what I do when I go into the classroom is I go immediately to a kid and just say, what are you trying to figure out today? And if they can tell me that, then it's probably three-dimensional. If, they, if they're like, ah, uh, they're learning about gravity, then they're probably not doing three dimensions. The greatest impact I've seen it is at the elementary, and that's an area where a lot of the time we don't get science going on. Um, but those kids who are kindergartners or grade one, they lived in the natural world for five years, and so they have a fundamental understanding of the natural world. And if you remember what a kindergartner was like, like all that happens with a kindergartner is just wonder flies out of their head. And they understand science just as well as we do. It's not like somehow we learn more science than they do. And so I think that the coolest thing is if you just let the kids talk and let them ask questions and let them investigate, you start to value the kid as an investigator uh, and more importantly, the kid as an as a important human.